Okay, so um, what we've done is we've taken um, a very sick looking um, uh, tuna and a sick looking PA stage somewhere. Where do we put that? Oh, goodness. Somewhere. Anyway, more to the point. Let me just go off the frequency where these guys are talking. We'll go down to. We won't go down. We'll go down to 70. No. Goodness. What about we get right out of everyone's way? Uh, 7060. I'm on an antenna at the moment, that's why I'm sort of trying not to uh, jump on top of anybody. So basically, um, uh, we've now put in the output stage from the TS930S, um, which um, we measured the outputs and decided that they look like they might actually work. Uh, we're not out of uh, hot water yet, but uh, I just want to show you that we're getting getting there. Uh, so basically... One two three four five one two three one two one two one two. So we, I've got a few, a few screws out at the moment too, by the way. So any flickering, don't worry about that too much. Um, although that's just coming up on the camera, I just thought I'd pull it back. Okay, so um, let's have a look. We're in uh, auto mode. We'll go to tune with the auto tuner in, and let's have a look. Okay, so 80 watts on tune. Now keep in mind, they actually drop their value of power down in tune. So when they're in tune, they're actually not, uh, I would have thought that's a little bit high uh, in regards to, um, so let's go to FSK and I would say it will pin the bird. Yeah, okay. Now, that's telling me that uh, we're gonna need to adjust that stage because we're over 100 watts there. Um, and we might actually go back to a, um, uh, it's one of the worst things you can do with the 930 is sort of try and uh, run loads more strain on the power supply etc anyway uh, we're just initially just having a bit of fun here uh, so uh, on sideband uh, let's have a look one two three four five hello so in excess of 100 watts now keeping in mind that bird meter is uh, just an average meter not a PP so once again this 930 is definitely running a bit high um, what have we done well let's have a look So we've taken this entire PA stage um, out of the 930 and uh, the other 930 that's sitting in pieces. We've got a collection of 930s in pieces, the other one over there. Um, and I decided not to use the antenna tuner um, just yet. I, look, I may change my mind on that because, you know, who knows, there might be a problem with this ATU, uh, which so far is looking good. Uh, but I do see there is a one problem which I'll get to in a minute. But um, so far... So we've, we're now sort of looking at this and saying, righto, our 28 volt supply is obviously not too bad. The reason we can say that is that we go to the um, 28 volts, one, two, three, four, five. We're not, with the 100 watts of output, we're not seeing the uh, voltage drop very much. We can also look at the current and say, right, what's our current draw? One, two, three, four, five. Hello, one, two, three, four, five. One, two, three, four, five. Hello, one, two, three. Hello. Eight, uh, eight odd amps um, at uh, 28 volts. So do the maths, you know, that's about right for 100 watts. Um, if this was 12 volts, it'd be uh, 16 odd amps. So, you know, makes uh, makes perfect sense. So look, that's looking good. The supply is looking good. The output's looking good. The output's looking a little bit too high. One last problem, I, <laughs> uh, I, I don't believe this, but anyway, there is. Have a look at this. One, two, three, four, five, nothing. So the mic gain, um, He's, well, the mic uh, and sideband, etc., is only working on uh, uh, on processor one, two, three, four, five. Which, uh, sorry, uh, VK3 Charlie mic testing seven zero six zero just for uh, identification. Um, so we'll go back to dummy load in a second. But I, I just wanted to sort of hear the receiver was still working well, and the receiver is working well. But we're nine parts there. So keep in mind. I've got quite a few screws out still uh, because when I'm testing like this, I'm uh, almost ready for it to go wrong. Uh, but uh, ATU seems to be working okay, which is good. Um, let's just have a look when we... Actually, let's go back down here for a minute. Um, when we turn the ATU off uh, and on this antenna, there should be a slightly S to higher SWR. Let's have a look. One, two, three, four, five. Oh, that's not too bad. One, two, three, four, five. Uh, but were we actually transmitting then? Just let me have a little look at that. Uh, make sure. One, two, three, four, five. Oh yeah, no, no, we're good. Sorry, I should have looked at my bird over here, <laughs> which is uh, obviously working. Um, okay, so look, the uh, auto ATU, when we go to tune, 
it's already tuned. All right, fair enough. Uh, if we were to go up the other end of the band, that it would tune. Actually, let's prove that for a minute. Let's say, let's go up to seven, two, three, one or something. We should see this meter here. Yeah, there we go. Just heard the motors go. 80 watts there. FSK will pin the meter. Yep. And lower side then. Hello, oh, test. All right. So apart from this one last little painful uh, problem that, um, and look, who knows, could be the mic gain control, could be, um, I've, I've found so many wires off and different things, diodes cut, I've found um, things that, uh, well, it's worth showing you actually, um, hang on, on the other one I can show you more, I'll just run over to the other radio. Things like this here where, you know, we've got this very dubious soldering, big diodes that are just... I mean, someone's used a welding torch to, you know, there's a, there's a bit going on with this one. Um, and there were things that we've picked up uh, that were really not uh, not great. Uh, we'll see what happens with this one. I, I um, we've, We're really chasing two or three faults on this one if, uh, you know, if we get to that stage. Uh, personally, I think we could get it back running as a receiver and call it a really good bench receiver. <laughs> anyway, we'll see. All right, so um, for the all intents and purposes, um, uh, what we were discussing in the last video was the MRF 485s. So even if we choose to fix the second one, which, you know, we may, we'll see, um, these MRF 485s are going to be a problem whether we choose to do 19, uh, 2SC 1969 changeouts. And I'm not sure, I haven't read the article, but they may need to rebias that and set up a bit. Uh, I would uh, put money on the fact that uh, it won't be a drop in replacement. Uh, but when I measured the four double twos on this, they looked okay. This will be the problem for sure. Uh, no, they didn't actually. One of them didn't look okay. Sorry. Um, one looked okay. The other one didn't over here. But um, anyway. Uh, but then we're you know we're struggling with, and this is where you've sometimes got to make two radios out of one. We're struggling with you know questions of what happened here. I mean, really, what happened here? Um, how did this radio look? It was with a service crowd before me. I know that. Um, uh, I actually was just on the phone to a mate of mine discussing that. And uh, so sometimes the problem is you're, you know, I would much rather get something straight from a client mate. Sorry, the old service days, I'm used to using the word client. These days, just to be very clear, uh, I don't fix radios for money or anything. I'm, I'm just, um, uh, I'd, I'd go broke. Uh, but I do enjoy having a bit of a look at things for mates. But, um, you know, this is sometimes, you know, this is your worst nightmare where somebody's got quite a few individual faults. Uh, and, and you know, and even linked with that, this is the same radio that now we're finding on top of the uh, keeping in mind this is the radio that had the output issue. So, this is uh, so just to be very clear, this is the PA stage uh, that was in this radio. So, we know that it's got uh, blown drivers. We second we, to that if someone didn't put it into processor mode and sat there on sideband, the second fault um, is that you know, one, two, three, four, five, nothing. Uh, so unless they went into processor, uh, they wouldn't have been able to get any sideband happening. But they wouldn't have got any power out anyway because of the blown uh, MRF uh, 485s. So this is the problem when you get something from who's it's been into a few people's hands because you're chasing multiple faults and you've really just got to kind of <laughs> calm down. There, there have been a few swear words. I you know I I don't swear a lot you know, but today I might have said a few swear words. And in previous instances where I've had these things to bits, um, there might have been a few nasty things said. Um, nothing against the owner, uh, definitely against the radio, but um, yeah, it's been fun. But yeah, look, uh, we'll track down the, um, we'll have a look, sorry, I'm, I'm going to say this in very carefully. We'll have a look at this uh, processor on, processor off issue. It'll be a switching issue or a, you know something going on here. Uh, or, don't get me wrong, um, it could be something just not plugged in that um, someone else has left unplugged. So, you know, you just got to go through and really start looking at things everywhere and saying, right oh, I might just uh, put on the uh, analyzer. I'm a little bit concerned about its output. right -o, so we're feeding into the uh, Motorola analyzer, which uh, reads just a tad low sometimes, to be very honest with you. I'm going to adjust that up. What do we got there? 114 watts. So let's call it 116, you know, that. so really we'll, we will be knocking that back to 100 watts. Every bit of current that you draw out of these power supplies is getting these power supplies hot. They they run very hot. They, they're not good supplies. So let me just say that right off the bat. They are not good supplies. So, um, 
you know, running this PA stage at in excess of what it should be uh, set at by the book, um, uh, they blow up quite easily, but all by themselves without having to, uh, you know, uh, doctor them up to any more. So overall, not bad. Um, now, the other thing that the other, uh, well, the other concern that I had when I uh, took the PA stage from uh, unit donor unit over there was that the donor unit had a massive receive fault, um, like it was. Uh, probably I was in the millivolts trying to get, um, you know, to hear uh, my tone. Sometimes that could have been the PA stage pulling it down. So when I changed that PA over, I did it at the risk of, you know, I may well have had a receiver fault on this um, and no transmit uh, by putting that stage in. Now, fortunately, that stage seems, appears okay. Let's hope. Uh, certainly, it just does look good at this stage. Uh, so um, that's great. Uh, but let's have a look at the receive on this. I'll just come down to, uh, so it was on 7100, I think, on the analyzer. Yep, all right. Okay, actually, we we're generating at the moment. Uh, yep. Okay, good. Okay, so we're putting in 1.58. We're still hearing it at 0.5 of a microvolt, so I'm reasonably happy. Now, they didn't have a um, preamp on these uh, from memory, no. Uh, but look, we're hearing at 0.5 a microvolt, so receiver, great. As distinct from the other one, where we uh, were uh, really <laughs> putting in, as I said, not uh, microvolts, we are putting in millivolts to even get a uh, signal to, to hear it. So um, anyway, let's turn that annoying noise off. Uh, and uh, let's just have a look at the quality of the sideband signal, even with this processor. One, two, three, four, five. One, two, three, four, five. One, two, one, two, one, two. Yeah, it's all right. Look. That's fine. Uh, so, for all intents and purposes, once we track down this little processor switch, who knows, could be the switch faulty. <laughs> um, that's what I want to do with my Friday night, pull the whole front panel off to replace that switch. Uh, <laughs> I'm being funny now. Uh, I've been, you can tell when I'm getting delirious because I've been working on something so long that I'm starting to, you know, say silly things. Anyway, but look, this at least is a part two, uh, not a part 72, I think I said would be, um, of you know, sometimes what you've got to do with the 9.30 to get it going. Um, don't beat yourself up. Um, if you buy yourself a set of MRF 485s and put two of them in there and they blow, uh, it's just the gain uh, of them. And it, it, this is a, a problem that uh, a few people have been seeing. Do look up the article, I will be, on the 2SC 1969 replacement where they're basically driving... Uh, they're using two, um, basically, CB parts, two SC1969s or two SC1307s that are exactly the same. And then they must be biasing them and setting them up to then drive. Uh, and I would have thought the uh, the 485 uh, would have been a healthier device as far as its power output uh, to to put in there. So I'm not sure whether, uh, with, I'll have to check the article, but... With the two two SC nineteen sixty nines, whether you're going to get enough drive to get you know hundred watts, that that would be the the thing that uh, I mean, if you bias and turn them on hard enough, I suppose yeah, maybe. Um, but I'm I'm just it's one of those have to suck it and see and try it and find out. Um, so you know that would be the next way to go with this here. If it wasn't for the fact that I know the other radio has got a massive receive fault, and uh, there's a few other things being doctored on it. Uh, that uh, I could go into, but would just bore the tears out of you. All right, well, there you go. Uh, one TS930 working again, and um, at least uh, my mate Alan can, uh, uh, you know, have that uh, in uh, in operation. So I, was just, I was just looking at that there. Sometimes when your needle's sitting there on receive, just go to your RF gain, crank it over, and that sort of be the problem after it's on. Uh, but, look, i I got to say this. I know I probably knocked... The 930 a little bit in my initial video and I do I, I any radio that takes so much time to work on and you've got to just uh, and, and I can be a bit harsh on them at times but the truth is when they're working they are brilliant radios that they really are so you know I, I don't want it to sound like you know don't go out and buy a 930 but if you ever get a problem with the 930 um, take it to somebody who knows what they're doing with one uh, because the problem is with somebody who doesn't, it just makes you know my job harder or somebody else's job harder uh, down the track. You know, trying to uh, trying to sort of get um, some sort of common sense out of it. All right, well, thanks very much for having a look at this. Um, we're um, pretty happy. Um, I'll go and sort this out. I won't bother putting another video up on what the mic fault was. I might I might make a note in the notes file at some stage. But one two three four five one two 
One, two, three, four, five, one, two. Got to be happy about that. It's um, certainly uh, nice to see the old girl working. Now we're going to go put the 40 million screws back in and we are going to turn that power just down a little bit. Um, I don't like that it's getting up into the 115 watt area. You might say, ah, oh, come on, it can't be that bad, but yeah, it can. Um, if you're continuously pushing these things, the power supply just doesn't like it. So I'm sort of repeating myself a bit here, but I want to make sure everybody understands just because this is a 28 volt output, um, this is not a 200 watt radio, you know, this is a 100 watt radio. So when you try and, you know, stress it and make it get those last little couple of watts out of it, generally that will hurt you at some stage. And uh, uh, it's, yes, it's something just to be aware of. All right. Um, actually, I was just having a little look myself at just how they uh, adjust the output stage. And I'm just going to have to be able to get into there. And I'm looking at it and going, yeah, we, we can get in there. That's all right. It's all right. I just, <laughs> just thinking out loud then. But uh uh, yeah, we'll be able to adjust that up, but we're just going to crank it back just a little bit just to um, And by the way and the tune-up uh, uh, The other indicator. Let me just show you that um, uh, Sorry, let's uh, go dump, 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 dump. What am I doing wrong here? Uh, oh, of course, we're not on the uh, antenna at the moment idiot. Oh, sorry. Okay. Uh, just I can show you up here uh, the tune-up 62 watts um, it, it doesn't need 62 watts. We can actually adjust that um, and we will so the tune when it does its tune look it can do that at 20 or 30 watts doesn't need to do it if you can imagine if you're going into a you know three to one swr or five to one swr and let's say this tuner can actually cope with that and bring it back down to one to one the last thing you want to be doing is throwing the full output of this thing into a massive swr um, while it you know and, and the thing is while it's going through its tuning process it's fluctuating from 10 to 1 down to 1 to 1. You know, it's it's going all over the place trying to find a, a perfect match between its LC function. So, uh, yeah, so we, we really like to not have maybe quite as much um, uh, power going on. I just look, my cameras are resetting at the moment. I, I thought, what's going on there? Um, unless um, Samantha's just uh, turned some power off and put it back on over in the uh, room that that's all based. But, uh, oh, there's coming back. <laughs> there you go. Oh, well. Um, Maybe it's done an update or something. Um, oh, well, we'll just um, see how that goes. Weird. Uh, anyway, so uh, Synopsis TS930, good radio. Um, don't blow them up because um, then I convert my attitude to bad radio. And there we go. There's Sam just running through. Um, uh, so it's getting a bit dark out there. By the way, these cameras are not our nighttime cameras. This is one we use for daytime for the dogs. And as you can see, it's all orientated around the office area for the dogs and that. So um, uh, we've got some much better ones for... Um, uh, for nighttime use, which uh, uh, are all those little cheapy snap ones, believe it or not, they work great out in the um, out in the out in the dark. All right, thanks very much for having a look at the video. 73s from VK3 Charlie Mike, uh, and um, if I can get this sorted out, uh, Steve, uh, good old Steve Mathias, um, I'll bring this down to you um, tomorrow to uh, give to Alan, and um, uh, and if I don't get the mic thing uh, sorted out, uh, I'll. Uh, talk to you about whether I do bring it down <laughs> I'd, I'd prefer not to I'd prefer to get this um, little last little thing sorted out so we'll see how desperate everyone is 73s VK3 Charlie Mike JDW229 Tangambalanga North East Victoria Australia uh, please subscribe um, thanks very much guys I'm, I'm just sort of trying to get this channel going a little bit um, it's uh, I was talking to Peter by email the other day from uh, TRX bench and uh, Peter said to me he said look there's no tricks to your YouTube channel. Um, he said, uh, I've had a look at what you're doing. He said, I, I think, you know, um, it's got some really good potential. Um, I think he's been very nice. But he did say that, you know, it actually took, um, he, he wasn't getting, you know, 60,000 views on something in the early days. Uh, but he, you know, he built his way up. Uh, keep in mind, TRX Bench is a little bit more complex uh, channel than mine. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> he's he's just so good at what he does but it was interesting to um but he did say you know keep asking people to subscribe um you know it really does help you to to uh, motivate you to do more videos and all that sort of stuff so i'm doing that as you said pete please subscribe you know sort of i'll even do the german accent if you want with the trx bench welcome to a trx bench no still can't do the accent oh no i'm no good at german accents all right 73 is all the k3 charlie mike cheers